And here we are as Kate at the observatory. I don't know, this may have been the day before by chance. I suppose that's possible. On the plane, Stephen leaned across me and pointed out of the window. Down there, he said. That's home. But all I saw were patches of color. I don't think until this moment that I understood that one could contain the other so completely. That's real deep. Now I wonder... Yeah, because, I mean, we can't really have any sort of interactions. We're the only, we're the only one here. So, I'm probably just going to be stuck with just listening to a bunch of tapes and logs, right? Not that I'm complaining or anything, I'm just kind of... ...guessing. The fuck? I watched a butterfly dancing in a strip of sunlight. All of its life contained in a single day. The blink of an eye between the ebb of the darkening tide. Lying there with the pattern curled around me, I saw the inevitability, the necessity of presence born from absence, the constant unfolding. Probably have to go upstairs and check this one out. Wait, no, this is the main one, isn't it? I don't know. Fuck it. Alright, I'm just gonna climb the stairs up this one. I'll get them all eventually. Yeah, alright. What is this, Tower 3? Tower four. Oh, hello there. You following me? Lizzie tried to leave with her child and why it was wrong to stop her. I try and explain that much of what it did was wrong. It shows me Stephen and Lizzie together. And I'm happy for them. Frank walks his fields with Mary. Wendy and Edward nest together in the orchards of their love. Jeremy lies at peace with his God at last. All of them are happy because they are together. I understand it better now. It is a collector of time. No butterflies. I would say something if I could think of anything to reflect on, but honestly, I just don't. <laughs> like, I don't have anything. Uh, I'm still having, even now, in the sixth story, I'm still having a hard time grasping exactly what this light is. Whether it has any sort of religious connotation, or whether it's simply just an alien or some kind of energy source that has 
some semblance of consciousness. I don't know. She seems to think it does. She thinks it's sentient. I don't know. I watched the pattern lean in and time slow to almost nothing. I saw the flame leap from Stephen's hand and the moment hang in the air forever. I watched his face. And in the last second, I almost believe he saw me. He wasn't frightened or angry. I remember his expression, just like I remember it from the first time early that morning when he woke and still half sleeping said, God, I love you. And I loved him as he entered the fire and I let him go. Knowing I wasn't ready to join him. We have held time to ourselves here in this place. Held the light to the ground because we were afraid of the coming dark. But now we understand that to cling to the light is not living. I've spent my life watching the illumination from a million dead stars reaching for me without grasping this meaning. The light we cast transcends our death. The pattern made by our living creates a bridge across the dark. The pattern made from our living creates a bridge across the dark. Huh. See, there's still one more observatory right up there. And then there's this. Well, actually, there's more than one. There's two, actually. I was mistaken. This one is very strange. It reaches out from the shadow of the tower, across the observatory, over the valley, and consumes the world. Everything is light now. Everything has come to rest. The world is scored by the traces we carved into it. Our presence is everywhere. The bridge joining our stories. This world existed before we came to it, and it will continue without us. In the empty fields and houses, our traces radiate, and others will come to dance in the light we cast. Who the fuck are you to make these decisions? We can slip away gently, unafraid, knowing that everything will continue. I don't... I don't like this, because it's almost as if she's speaking as an ambassador for all of people, as if she gets to make this decision for everyone, to end their mortality as they know it, because there's potentially something better. Even though she hasn't even experienced it, she just thinks that that is the case because reasons. I don't know why I'm getting so upset about this. <laughs> I don't know, it just seems kind of... I don't know how to explain it. Just... Arrogant. Like, there's just this ridiculous amount of hubris in everything she's saying. Like, she knows. But she doesn't know. She just thinks she does. Because she's close to it. When in reality, honestly, she's probably one of the... At this point, now talking through this... Um cassette or whatever it is, she is probably the least knowledgeable. Everybody else already is there. She has no idea. It's complicated, but it's just... It's... I don't know. It's kind of confusing. But... I don't feel like she should be speaking for everyone on this. Oh, where are we?
Oh, well, hello there. I'm gonna... I can't. Okay, I gotta maneuver this first. is coming now. I'm not afraid. We have each other. We lived apart from them. We understand now our failure to touch, to belong. But it doesn't matter anymore. Everybody is gone. And we will join them. We are born apart. Driftwood on the banks of an endless dark ocean, and we will be carried away by the swell soon enough. But in between, in the single day of living, that dancing in a strip of sunlight, we can find what we miss. The love that makes us whole. The imminence. Everybody found their other. This pattern is mine. All right, well, that was Everybody's Gone to the Rapture. Ah, oh my God, I, I have a... I have a decent amount to say about this game, and I don't know exactly how to articulate it, which is kind of a problem. Uh, I like the game when it comes down to it. I enjoyed the story, and I enjoyed the voice acting. I really liked that each person, or almost every single person in the game, each character had such a distinguishable personality that... You, you were able to identify them early on. Like, they didn't... None of them had any sort of visual characteristics. They were all just lights. Um, but I still was able to identify them um, after a little while. I was able to identify Dr. Wade and Jeremy and Steven and Kate and Lizzie and Rachel and Sam and all these people and, you know, and be able to identify what they were, who they were, and what their motivations had been before they were claimed by the light. And... I think that's really cool. Um, overall, just everything about this game I thought that was very unique and interesting, and um, I would... I, it's definitely a, a walking simulator. That's that's definitely what it is, but it's probably my favorite walking simulator I've ever played. Um, you know, I, I, I didn't really play Dear Esther, but... Uh, this this game probably has a lot of the same critic or can can have a lot of the same criticisms that that one did, but you know not every game is for everyone. You know some people don't like playing first person shooters. Some people don't like, um, you know, uh, uh, role playing games and stuff like that. Everybody has um, their preferences and what they enjoy. Uh, what I am not too fond of is when people like look at something like this and they scoff at it. It's like that's not really a game. I mean maybe not definitionally. Possibly it isn't. Uh, I mean, I don't think that we really have a, an actual certain definition of what constitutes a game. But even if that is, isn't the case, that doesn't really mean anything, does it? Like, even if it's not actually a game, so the fuck what? Who cares? Like, does it matter what you call it or what it is defined as? What matters is if you enjoy it. And what matters is if, if you found it to be an interesting... Uh, piece of, of entertainment, no matter what medium it's transferred through. Uh, I don't know. I just feel like a lot of people get all uptight about that stuff and really uh, really just overanalyze it to the point that it's completely unnecessary. And I don't know. Like I, I enjoyed this. I thought it was fun. Um, or not really fun. I wouldn't say fun is the right word, but just interesting and 
and uh, enjoyable. Um, I'm going to wait here for a second to see if there's anything after the credits. Nope, just more credits. Okay. Uh, so, yeah, that's just, just uh, sort of before I get into what was actually inside of this uh, game itself, just speaking of walking simulators in general, just giving my opinion on that. But furthermore... When it comes to the story in this game, um, there were definitely a lot of parts that I appreciate. Actually, in all honesty, for what it was, I feel like it was excellent. I, I mean, I don't have very many gripes about it at all that I wouldn't have about any sort of walking simulator. Uh, the biggest gripe that you really could have possibly is that it was going too slow. Um, but at the same time, it's there for exploration. It's not there to go fast. You're supposed to look around and take everything in. That's the point of it. Um... But, you know, at the same time, I, I, I was able to find the sort of running, or I wouldn't call it running, but s fast walking uh, button about f four stories in. And that made things go a little, uh, a little bit quicker. Uh, but yeah, I mean, just if you have a little bit of patience, this thing, I think, was, was solid. I think it was really good. And uh, I, I will say that... It was entirely, this story and this game was entirely reliant upon the characters that it had. Which is something that you can't really say about Dear Esther. I, once again, I haven't really played much of any of it. But uh, I believe that there's really only a narrator. And because of that, if you don't like that narrator, then you're probably not going to like this walk that walking simulator. But this had so many different characters that you were bound to find somebody to be invested in. Um, and there were, I was invested in most of the characters. I probably would say that Frank was probably the most boring out of all the point of view, uh, characters there were. Um, but still, you know, I, it was overall a very enjoyable game and I liked the settings. Visually, it was fantastic. Um, now touching on the characters for a second, because there were a lot of gripes I had about different people throughout the game. Make no mistake, that's not me touching on how I feel about the writing. It's how I feel about these people, these characters specifically, and how they were intended, probably, I would expect to be, uh, intended, um, to be written as, you know, um, Lizzie was kind of a hypocrite a lot of the time, and she would pretend that she was not the person that she was, which was a cheating coward when it comes right down to it. Those are probably the best words to describe her as, because her husband, Robert, at least the way he was described, was kind of just lacking in any sort of attentiveness. He wasn't a very, um, uh, caring husband, I suppose, but there were never any sort of um, references to him being abusive or cruel or anything like that. He just was kind of lazy. And Lizzie decides, instead of talking to him about this and telling him he, that I know that he's drinking again, I'm just going to go ahead and cheat on him and then leave him. Because, you know, that's the way you're supposed to do it. Like, no, be a fucking adult and talk to him about it. At the very least, give it a shot. You know, and that kind of thing bugged me. And and Steven was an asshole to everyone. Not as, He was always rude and unkind. And um, that made him an, a not very likable person when it comes down to it. But I do believe that uh, despite that, his intentions were good. He wanted to help or he wanted to, at the very least, prevent bad things from happening to people. Clearly, that was his entire objective. Um, until the very end where he had to call in a, an airstrike. But that was more so just, uh, you know, for the greater good scenario. It wasn't because he wanted to kill these people. It's because he wanted less people to die, basically. Um, then you have somebody like Frank, which I've already touched on. He didn't really have anything that bugged me, but he didn't really have anything that I liked about him either. He just was kind of there. Um, yeah, touching on Wendy... Once again, she was kind of like the nosy, busy, or not even really nosy, but just kind of a busybody who um, had her opinions on everyone. She loved talking about people and how she felt about them, despite not even knowing them. You know, Jeremy's a perfect example of that. One, probably the nicest person in the entire game, and and Wendy seems to dislike him because reasons, uh, until she finds out that he is a compassionate human being, and then she starts to like him. Uh... But, you know, she was encouraging Liz and uh, her son to both cheat on their spouses because she likes him better when she's with Lizzie. So it's not about what you like. It's about what he likes, you know. And maybe had you not tried to tempt him into doing this, he wouldn't have. And maybe things could have worked out had the whole situation with, 
the light not happened. You know, I, I don't know. Maybe I'm reading too much into it, but it's just stuff like that makes me dislike them as people. But it also does provide a level of um, complexity and depth to them uh, because that's not all there is. It's not just, OK, this person's a hypocrite. This person's a coward. They still, you know, Lizzie was a very um, she, she was a very responsible and uh, I would say I would say attentive is the right word, but strong she was a strong person like mentally aside from that one weakness like you saw multiple times where she would be sort of the voice of reason where everybody's losing their shit she'd be like okay calm down calm down let's do this this and this and then we have it solved um so stuff like that just kind of uh shows that that despite her own personal issues she's she's good at solving problems and i don't know what all those numbers are about <laughs> um but yeah, I'm not going to go into every single character and, and outline everything about them, but it's just stuff like that that makes it, I feel, to be good writing, you know? And uh, I like that. And now the screen's just black for some reason. I'm not sure what that's all about. Okay, we're back to the main screen. Uh, I don't really have that much else to say about it. Uh, I already talked about the visuals. I already spoke about the characters and all of that. Um, oh, that's another thing. The music. The music has, uh, I think, really helped define this game. Uh, there was always something, uh, some sort of score playing at any given moment, and it was always very um, thematic. It, it gave the new section of the game, the new part of the map, a different feel to it. Um, and, that, uh, and now getting on to the environments and the different places. Each area had its own sort of um, theming and feeling to it. You know, the first, with Jeremy, it was sort of su a suburban kind of area, almost like a village, basically. The second with Wendy was just a bunch of roads, really, and like a lot of neighborhoods with trees around. The third with Frank was a farming uh, place, very orange and yellow, and uh, just really pretty all around. You know, the fourth with the lakeside, it's raining. The first time it was raining, it was overcast. There was sort of a uh, beach and harbor and, and ocean kind of feeling to it. Um, very A lot more aquatic than the other places. Uh, so yeah, each, each area had its own distinct feeling to it. And I think that that was really neat. And I think that's a good, good on the art team for doing that. Because uh, that made the game a lot more um, uh, distinguishable you know, between sections. And I guess the last thing to discuss is any sort of symbolic aspects of the game itself. I went through that a lot th uh, throughout the playthrough, but what the light potentially represents. Um, there were obviously a lot of religious connotations throughout the game, um, especially early on. Uh, and I don't know if that's really what they were necessarily going for in terms of like saying, no, this is actually, you know, about God or religion or anything like that. I don't think that's necessarily the case because there are a lot of um, uh, extraterrestrial overtones as well. Um, it could very well just be up to your own interpretation, whatever you think the light may have been or what it was represented by. Uh, I don't think there is any clear absolute as to what it is. In it's purely just this is a thing, this is a light, and it seems to give Kate this almost serene feeling. And uh, potentially even in, in I wouldn't, I, I don't know, this might be an extreme word to use, but indoctrinated. Because she did act very strange a lot of the time. And, and she had this sort of feeling of nobody else understands it but me. You know, I'm the only one. I'm the person that's here in it. I'm feeling it. I know what's happening. Nobody else gets it but me. Uh, and so it very well could be that she's being brainwashed into believing that this is a good thing. Or she actually is right and it is good. It's hard to really say. We're only really hearing her perspective on things, and her perspective could be incorrect. Uh, you can't really be certain about that. The one thing that kind of bugged me, and I mentioned it at the very end of Kate's story right there, is her hubris, her speaking as if she knows that this is good for everyone. Everybody needs to just accept it, and that this is the next step for humanity. And it's like, no, you don't get to say that. Like, you don't get to claim that you know. 
It's like, maybe this is what's best for you, but maybe it's not best for Steven. Maybe it's not best for Lizzie. You know, Lizzie just died. You know, it's just like, these these people might have had a different plan for their lives. And maybe you're okay with being consumed by this light, but maybe that's not what's best for all of humanity. Maybe, maybe, maybe just maybe, that's the case. Say maybe again. <laughs> uh... I don't know. I I I'm feel I'm speaking very passionately and strongly about something I know absolutely nothing about, so it's kind of ridiculous for me to do that. Um, but I don't know. It's just it's my initial reaction to how she was speaking, and it kind of bugged me a little bit. And maybe it shouldn't have. Maybe I'm just overreacting. I don't know. But no matter what, this is certainly an interesting game, and um, I. I, hate, I don't know if it's worth $20. It's really hard for me to say that for certain. If you really like this type of game, absolutely it's worth $20. If you're kind of on the fence about how you feel about walking simulators, eh, maybe not. Maybe it's not your thing. Maybe you don't want to uh, purchase a game like that. It's kind of up to you as to what your feelings um, are about paying that kind of price for a game that really doesn't have much replayability. Unless possibly you miss something. Uh, that's really up to you. Um, what I can say is that I really enjoyed it, and it's it's had me thinking throughout the playthrough of different scenarios and possibilities, and it's always had me speculating, and I, I always enjoy doing that during a playthrough, or really just playing a game in general. And uh, in that aspect, uh, I really liked it. So, anyway, I really hope that you guys enjoyed the playthrough in general, and if you did, please be sure to like and subscribe and all that, and I will see you guys... Next time. Oh, no. Whoa, was that the end of... Was that seriously the end of Steven's story? For someone who's being burned to death, he's rather calm about the whole thing.